Oh, well, he's very popular, Ed. The sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, dickheads. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. That is why I have got to catch him this time. To show these kids that the example he sets is a first-class ticket to nowhere. Oh, Ed, you sounded like Dirty Harry just then. Really? Uh-huh. Um, and let's see here. I'm going to pull up my interview questions, too, because I wish I had a good enough memory to memorize all of them. But I <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so let's see here. When we... Uh, so just to get started, do you have any questions for me uh, before we start? Or uh, No. No, I've done enough of these that I'm not too concerned. Okay. You can, cool. You can, yeah. If you, in fact, if you can come up with an original question that I haven't heard in the last six months, gold star. Well, so I'll do my very best. Okay. Um, but this interview is less focused on uh, the beliefs of the flat Earth community. I really want to know the social aspects of sure. like, what it's like to be a flat earther, and I'm not sure if you've uh, talked about that ever. Mm, a few times, but that's okay. Let's 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 go with it. Okay. So the first question is, uh, what does it mean to you specifically to be someone who believes, or actually, okay, so do you mind the term flat earther? I want to make sure that I'm addressing you. And no, the no, not at, not at all. Um, I mean, there's some people that go by globe skeptic and some people, uh, you know, flat earth proponent, but whatever. Uh, I am, yeah, I, I am a flat earther. That's what I've put in my speeches. And I, sometimes I'll throw in that I am the, if flat earth was a university, somewhat related to you, uh, yeah. I would be the freshman recruiter. I would be the orientation gotcha. guy that meets you at the, the, the front door and says, you know what? Behind me is a whole bunch of buildings called Flat Earth University. Mm -hmm. And have fun with it. Okay, that's cool. I mean, I have, I looked through, uh, I watched the documentary, mm -hmm. so thank you for that. Oh, yeah. I looked through, uh, I, I started going through the, the uh, one of the, I don't think it was the uh, the flat Earth. The you, you sent me two playlists, or there was one that you sent me, and there was one on your YouTube channel. Right. Uh, and I started going through that one uh, because it was like more nitty gritty, and I felt that I needed to understand like a lot. And some of it's really interesting. It's yeah. just like stuff that I've never thought about before. Most people uh, haven't, which is why this thing just keeps growing like weeds. <laughs> it just yeah. keeps getting bigger and bigger. So my favorite was the uh, the one about the. Was it Antarctica or like the South Pole? Yeah. And how uh, no one is. Yeah, no one can go there. For resources. Yeah, it's locked down, and it's it was done quietly in about 1960, and since then, and and honestly, it it it's not like a secret like this. They needed much help to keep it a secret because, especially with yeah. Antarctica, because the place is just a huge uh, series of levels of negative reinforcement. Nobody wants to go there. It's a horrible place. It's terrible. It's yeah. it's ridiculously cold. There's nothing to see. Uh, it's at it, it's at altitudes that most altitude sickness kicks in at, and uh, there's there's no indigenous plant life or, or animal life. So you got to whatever your exploration you're going on, you got to take it with you. Yeah. So I agree. Um, okay, but now that I know that flat earther isn't like it's a term that most people will not. Find. Oh no, everyone's fine with okay. flat earther. You're totally fine. Um, so my question is, what does it mean to you to be a flat earther? Uh, to be, it is, in my opinion, because I, you know, I grew up watching some conspiracies. You know, everyone has got their favorites, but mm -hmm. when you reach flat Earth, it is the pinnacle of all open-mindedness. In, okay. in in my opinion, meaning if you can get your because and I'm not kidding when I when I said that in in different videos that I made, which is look, I know people that are fully convinced that the entire royal family is made out of lizards, and yet you can bring up flat Earth to them, they're like, they just laugh you out of the room, and then yeah. we've seen this time and time again to where if you can get into flat Earth, everything else is easy. It's mm -hmm. it's because you're there's so much reinforcement against flat earth i mean it's the only conspiracy we debunk to children you know we yeah. put the globe in the classroom at six years old or earlier and it's there forever and uh so yeah that's what it means to me the to be the open uh, ultimate open-minded person is to be a flat earther interesting mm -hmm. okay um do you think that in, in terms of 
you know, having that ultimate open mindedness, is there almost a, a sense of pride to being a flat earther where you you feel that you've almost achieved this level of yeah 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 there is an achievement there no no doubt and it's mostly because of the journey you have to go through to get to that point mm -hmm. everybody seriously if you want a, a great example of the five stages of acceptance this is it which is okay. everybody in the beginning you know denial followed by anger followed by bargaining followed by depression followed by holy smokes i mean everybody including me you know i, I used to collect I was not uh, one of those. I mean, yeah, I'm open minded, but I really I love the globe model. I love the space program. And I'm sitting there six, seven months into this and I'm banging my head on the keyboard, literally going, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. And then all of a sudden you look at it a little bit more and you're going, oh, man. Mm -hmm. It just might be. And so, yeah, there is a sense of achievement there. No question. Because there's a journey. No, I mean, yes, I've seen the fastest I've seen anybody turn is about 30 minutes. But most people take okay. about two weeks. They they watch. In fact, Google did some analytics where there was a guy that worked for uh, YouTube. And he said the average person when they go into Flat Earth watches about 20 of them in a row. That takes some time. Wow. That takes a lot of time, which is why YouTube has been helping us to a certain degree. You know, we're, we make them a whole bunch of money. Uh, you know, if you, you know, their goal is to keep you in YouTube for a long time. And that's what we do. Yeah. Cool. That's really interesting. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Go figure. I didn't know, but it made sense because I kept hearing the same thing. It's like, oh yeah, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And by the, and that, yeah, that's the journey. You sit down and you, you blow off work for a little while and, and whatever shows you were binge watching before that, you put them on hold and you're watching because you keep trying to, to get through it in your head. And mm -hmm. then finally, if you can make it through the end of the tunnel at two weeks, well, ta-da, achievement. You, you wow. probably made it. That's that's really interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so you mentioned that there were other people in like the, the broader conspiracy theory community that, that would still laugh at like oh, the yeah. notion that they Every, were this everybody class. does. Everybody doesn't matter what conspiracy you're in, whether it's uh, JFK or 9-11 or moon landings or Sandy Hook or Boston bombing. Everybody laughs at Flat Earth at first. In fact, I've made a comment many times, which I've said that. If you don't laugh at Flat Earth in the beginning, there's probably something wrong with you because okay. it's either that. I mean, the only people I have ever seen click into Flat Earth that mm -hmm. fast have been women. Not a big surprise. You know, they're open minded to a lot more uh, things. They're not as stubborn. And mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, it's most of your conspiracy people have their favorites and everybody hates Flat Earth. Yeah. Everybody, everybody. In, cons in fact, it's it's funny. And in fact, I said that in the documentary. I said everybody in the conspiracy world knows about Flat Earth and they all hate it. Yeah. It's like, why? but you don't know why you hate it. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story, um, Please do. which is I remember uh, it clicking on my very first Flat Earth video back in 2014. And I remember mm -hmm. being visibly flushed. I'm introspective enough that I'm going, why am I embarrassed to click on this thing? Look, I'm an older, I'm an old, older guy. Mm -hmm. I, I've done my share of the internet, right? There's a lot of weird stuff on the internet. I've never been embarrassed before clicking on something on the internet before. And there's a lot of freaky stuff out there. So why am I embarrassed about this thing? And it caught me by off guard. I'm going, why would I have a physical reaction to this? And I'm starting to mull it over. I'm going, oh, of course, the conditioning. Because I've been told so many times, it's almost a, it's almost the, the the worst taboo ever to even look into it. And if you're an American, it's even worse because then, like Fox News, who has covered us several times, uh, they they said, well, yeah, the the one woman, in fact, she said this just about a month ago. She goes, I believe in the moon landings because I'm a patriot. I said, wow, hmm. that's interesting. really an interesting saying because that means that you're just believing. It. It's like okay to be a. a a strong American is to believe whatever is on that television. Mm -hmm. Regardless, if it comes from the government, you have to believe it. I'm going, uh, it's, it's a lot of faith right there. And yeah. one that I don't think is exactly warranted nowadays. Mm -hmm. That comment is, is really interesting about um, believing the moon landing because you're a patriot. It's almost as if to, to draw this line for people who don't believe in the moon landing is that they're not patriots and one of the things i'm very interested in when, when it talking with uh people who believe the earth is flat is how do people deal with that that line that's drawn in the sand so often because you as i'm you know you live in america you certainly identify as american so how how do you 
cope with, you know, comments like that when people insinuate that you're not a real American because you don't believe in like some iconic American uh, achievement. I, I throw it back at them and I say, especially when I'm talking to people overseas and I say, look, Americans lie all the time. <laughs> We lie about we we lie about stuff constantly. Don't don't <laughs> yeah. believe anything the Americans tell you. And I'm telling you, you know, when British people ask me, it's like, aren't you an American? I'm going, yeah, I'm a proud American. I love this country, best show on earth. But that's just yeah. it. Part of it is a show. You know, we we try to make the best impressions. I mean, let's let's not forget that just a few years ago, they literally were proposing pulling uh, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and slavery out of the textbooks because it didn't paint us in a very good light. Oh. Like, and you know, that was never gonna fly. I mean, even if you could get the atomic weapons out, what are you gonna do with slavery? Really, you're gonna pull, how are you gonna remove that from the textbooks? Look, we, mm -hmm. uh, that, the, the short version is this, we lie about stuff all the time. Business, yeah. politics, sports, entertainment, journalism, and yes, even science. People <laughs> lie, all, and I could give you multiple examples, we, we, we all can. Uh, you know, we all know the examples. It's just the ones you choose to look at and the ones you don't choose to look at. So mm -hmm. when someone comes forward, and I know she worked for Fox News, and I know she was uh, uh, one of the press secretaries for George Bush back in the day. But mm -hmm. come on, seriously, you're going to toe that line completely? And maybe, you know, that's part yep. of the job. It's like, look, if you work for Fox News, it's like from God's lips to Fox News, you got to do it. So that's fine, but it, she's not the only one. I've heard this from other people where they've said, no, don't you believe in the moon landing? Well, that's not American. Come on, just because the flag's painted on it doesn't mean that it's absolutely the truth. Yeah. And, and just because, you know, we, we look, I'll end that part on this, which is we know that other countries lie. Look, Reichstag happened. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Things happen, you know, there are, we, uh, hist there's a great quote, which is, you know, not just history is written, written by the winners. It's by Napoleon. And he said, uh, that history is just lies that are agreed upon. Isn't that the, yeah. really the case? I mean, whoever survives the battle is like, okay, how did it go down? <laughs> you know, it's kind of, it's the old criminals thing. It's like, okay, everybody, yeah. let's get our story straight. Mm -hmm. And that whatever story you put forward, that's history. Yeah interesting mm. there's um and so what so speaking of history and um the documentary there was a a portion of uh of the documentary when you were at a one of the uh co national conferences and there were people that were talking about raising their children as flat earthers right um and while you might not i don't know i haven't like looked into you that much like past the documentary so i don't know if you like have a family now or anything nope. like that no nope. never married never had kids okay um, I was wondering, do you know anything like of the process of what it looks like to raise children to believe like in that belief? Are they homeschooled? Like a how lot of them, a lot of them are homeschooled and the ones that aren't, you basically have to teach them both mm -hmm. sort of like, uh, the people that teach people, um, their kids, uh, biblical things and evolution based things simultaneously. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, don't believe again don't believe everything that is in a textbook don't mm -hmm. just just don't do it and it's easy you know which is why i did the whole core of the earth thing is one of my flat earth clues which is like look the, the core of the earth is supposedly four thousand miles down we, we, we've only drilled down eight miles and yet you are preaching those cross sections we've all seen them many many times as absolute mm -hmm. gospel and what i didn't realize until i started looking into this was there used to be fine print in the textbooks below that 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 diagram that said oh yeah we have actually no idea what's going on down there and then eventually they just got rid of it and it's like yeah you can't really do that it's like taking the warnings labels off of cigarettes yeah mm -hmm. it's like people all of a sudden look at now the they look at the cross section of the earth and they say oh well that must be it because that's what's in the textbook and it's like oh it's come on you you got which is why I, literally at the end of everything i do uh, i put uh, you know, do your own research and ask questions. Mm -hmm. Don't take everything at face value because again, jumping back, people will lie to you yep. all the time. I don't care what topic it is. And seriously, no, even science, you know, can don't tell, don't tell me it's like, well, yeah, fine business and politics and entertainment and, and sports. Yeah. People lie, right? Because we're so <laughs> competitive, which is true. It's one of our big faults, but not science. It's like, really? Really? You, you want to get into the, the, the fact that, you know, sci science, when they took all the money to cut corners to bring products to market, 
you know, and they're going, yeah. well, what? Like, what? I'm going, I don't know. Just a few off the top of my head, lead paint, lead gasoline, DDT, all the versions of DDT, asbestos, we're still paying those. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't know. All the scientists that took the, the bribes that tell us that cigarettes were fine because, yeah. you know, lab geeks need Porsches too. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Those are all really interesting points. Thank mm. you very much. Yeah. Um, so I want to, I want to kind of like go back to, um, cause you know, we, we talked about like potentially raising kids. Oh yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta, yeah. you gotta teach them both, uh, mm-hmm. and then let them decide for themselves. Kind of, you know, put that in their head. It's like, look, yeah. do your own tests. Don't, for when it comes to kids, it just, if it's kids or anybody, and that is, look, you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level? Fine. Mm-hmm. Totally can do that. You want to tell me what the core of the Earth looks like? No, 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 not so fast. You want to tell me what what the cross section of Jupiter is? Uh, how are you pulling that off? Uh, you want to tell me how what you know? And then they go into. I mean, seriously, Tesla had a great quote where he says, "We've gotten to a point now." This was back in the twenties and the thirties, where he says that that people are just building uh, equations on top of other equations without ever revisiting the foundation. To where mm-hmm. now they're up to a certain level. Those whatever he he said, the equations at a certain level, they mean nothing. Because yeah. they're, they're assuming everything below it. So when I get into a debate, you know, when I was doing the National Geographic thing and they had a guy uh, from uh, Cal Poly or whatever it was, he specializes in dark matter and dark energy. It's like dark, dark, dark energy is completely theoretical. Completely. Yeah. And, and he's treating it. He's, and I know it's National Geographic and they're a big science backer. They're treating mm-hmm. it like he is speaking, you know, speaking from the mount. You know, yeah. like like it's real it's like come on come on we can't even say we can't even prove gravity gravity mm-hmm. you can look it up gravity is a theory uh your best scientists will tell you uh they can't tell you what gravity is they can mm-hmm. only tell you what it does they can only tell it you does. the symptoms because they cannot replicate it and mm-hmm. if you can't replicate it i'm sorry it's like fine you know uh it's a it's a magical mystical force that pulls everything down right Mm-hmm. Well, uh, what is that exactly? You know, when you're, you, I know they're using, they're not using the word magical. They use the word mm-hmm. invisible. And it's like, yeah, so it's a molecular magnet. And that's yeah. it. That's all you got. Cause that's what we use too in our model. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say that um, everything that you, you've brought up so far is really one of the things that has struck me the most when researching uh, the flat earth community slash the flat earth movement, you know, um, is that, uh, despite the the really really harsh criticisms that you often face, you, for the most part, the community as a whole is very. Um, how do I say this? It's not that th- it, they just have this interesting take that seems. Um, it seems like scientists should respect it, but they don't. Can't, in the sense that can't they can't respect it? Yeah, uh, they've spent too much time. I've I kind of joked. That I said, look, if you have a master's degree, no offense to your friends, if you have a master's degree in your in a physical science, mm-hmm. uh, you're doomed. There's nothing. There's nothing. They, they, there's so much. I mean, come on. The, the conditioning just through high school is enough mm-hmm. that 99 percent of the population believes it, or at least it used to be 99 percent. Uh, and then if you get your bachelor's and then uh, whatever postgraduate degree you know work you're, you're mm-hmm. doing, you're you're really. I mean, it's so it's so burned into your head that you you're not coming out of this until mainstream media actually announces it and even then you're probably just going to crawl into a bottle of scotch somewhere Mm -hmm. and and be like "Uh, (laughs) i wasted my life you know that sort of thing so uh, but to your responses like you know even the drawing the harsh criticisms i kind of treat it like a forest fire and then in, Mm -hmm. in that that yes there are criticisms you treat the the criticisms like say water against a forest fire you may be able to get a spot here and there but the fire is so wide and there's so mm-hmm. many different facets to it that the fire doesn't care. It's like, yeah. it's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that part's having problems. Let's just mow over this section mm-hmm. of forest. And that, because again, um, you know, I put out the clues and my, the clues that I did were kind of a shotgun pattern approach, which is okay. Yeah. Look at this, look, this, 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 this. And I've put a challenge out to, to scientists going on three years now, or I said, come at me. Give me mm-hmm. every, give me everything you got. And the reason, in fact, the, there was a great, I don't know if you, you probably didn't watch the speech uh, they did in Canada where I was talking about, um, who was it? Um, there was a German television team that wanted to me to debate a physicist from Georgetown. And, yo, yeah, yeah. And we had the whole thing set up and they, it was their idea. And there was a guy, okay, we're going to do this really, uh, um, 
uh, compartmentalized. So where yeah. you're going to read some questions, just like we're doing here, and yeah. you're going to be on video, and then we're going to take that video and send it to him. He's going to re do that video. He's going to watch. He's going. To, we're going to go back and forth. We're just going to keep sending each other videos, right? Yeah. I sent him my first five questions, and that was it. He folded like a card table. And that was really? it. I mean, and the German television team was really disappointed. But the point was, is that even those five, yeah, he might have been able to tackle one or two of those questions. But unless mm -hmm. you can get all five or all 10 or all 30 that we have, yeah, but you're 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 in a tough spot because you don't want to be that guy. Um, I had a, a, a psychiatrist friend because I asked her early on. I said, uh, I said, why? Why can't I get any academics to come at me? Or mm -hmm. came at us. And she goes, are you kidding? <laughs> she goes, do you know what happens if someone, you know, someone with a PhD goes up against Flat Earth and they don't, it's not about winning or, you mm -hmm. know, it's, you have to win f early. It's like a boxing yeah. match. You're favored to knock this guy out in the first round, right? In the first couple minutes of the first round. If you don't, the longer he stays standing, the harder it makes you look worse. And yeah. so all of a sudden, if you're four or five rounds in, all of a sudden people aren't looking at him anymore. They're looking at you going, yeah. why have you knocked this guy? Why, why is he still standing? Why is this still happening? And then mm -hmm. you become that guy. And, you know, no, again, no offense, but when you get up to a certain academic degree, it's all about being published and the community and you want to, you know, you, mm -hmm. you want to be part of this group. No one wants sure. to be ostracized from academia. Yeah, I I think that's a, an excellent point that not a lot of people consider. And I think that it also really contributes to the the vitriol that um, you and your community are exposed to because it's it's almost it's like I, I wonder that if the it's almost like a fear of like that that loss in status, either in academia or or what else will come from it that really prevents people from engaging with the subject matter at hand. Right. Right, exactly. And because we can't get an organized defense, it, we just keep growing wider and wider. And, and we put the challenge up to people on a regular basis. And we say, look, I, in fact, the, the speech that I that I gave up in Canada was more of a warning to science, which I said, look, if you don't do something soon, mm -hmm. if it, you are not going to have a chance, meaning by the you know, if, if they let this thing yeah. keep going the way it's going in another year, it's not going to matter what defense they try to put up against it because the numbers are going to be too great. I mean, we've mm -hmm. already broken, you know, some YouTube metrics to where we're just because and the, the reason is the reason why it's spreading as fast as it is. And it's, I'm not I'm not exaggerating here. I, I can't overstate this is because the flat earth model, especially with the help of social media, has become mm -hmm. easier to understand than the globe. And you're saying, okay, well, what does that mean? I'm going, well, think of it. People, uh, the the whole um, the line from uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War, it's mm -hmm. what, probably the only thing I ever took from that book, really, that I memorized, which was people are like water. They always take the path of least resistance, always. Mm -hmm. And and it's not not necessarily me saying that people are lazy, but come on, they are. Uh, you know, when we transitioned yeah. over, why do people text now instead of uh, call call each other on the phone? It's like, well, mm -hmm. it's easier. I'm going, no, it's not really easier physically. It's emotionally easier. It's easier. Yeah. It's less taxing on you. You know, you don't have to get emotionally ready to call somebody. You know, like you can text. You could be crying and texting. Yeah, everything's great. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, but that's the thing with flat Earth. Try to explain the heliocentric model without using geometry and trig and calculus and quantum mechanics. You can't, mm -hmm. and the average person, and here's, uh, sorry, let me end this part on this, which is the yeah. reason I know this is absolute fact is because when we did, and it wasn't even my idea, it was when they started measuring the curvature of the earth, when mm -hmm. the mainstream science curvature of the earth formula, and I'll say this to people on the street, and I watched it time and time and time and time and time again, which is I say, okay, it's eight inches per mile, and that they're going, I'm totally with you, totally with you, I got it. I go, squared. They freak out. Everyone glazes over and they forget everything they ever learned in high school algebra. It, yeah. Because nobody remembers. Most people, you know, it's a very small percentage of the people that are in that math category. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, and they're saying, okay, what's your point? My point is, if people don't know that, try to get science to explain. If they don't know that simple equation, how to solve that simple equation, what do you think science is coming at? Well, given, you know, this calculus equation, this trig and this geometry, I'm going, you might as well be um, feeding them white noise. They mm -hmm. aren't here. They do not understand what you're saying. Unless science yeah. can dumb down the heliocentric model 
to the level that Flat Earth is now, mm-hmm. they are going to lose. And and there's nothing there's nothing you can stop that. Mm-hmm. Sorry, my little rant. No, no, no. I think that's very fascinating. Um, and I actually I wanted to bring up uh, the metaphor. You keep on comparing uh, the the flat Earth community to like a wildfire. Right. And uh, I think that's really interesting. And I, it makes me wonder if it's if the community is maybe misclassified. Uh, do you think that perhaps it's more? like a social movement instead of an actual community it's boy you know we've been trying to define it for some time now Uh, Mm -hmm. there are certain it's part of several it's uh, there's several different uh, things i could use for it it's part wildfire part religion part part university i like to say it as a as a university because the second you bring religion into it people say well it's a cult you know, the, the yeah. immune, it's like, well, it's a cult and you're a cult leader. It's like, no, 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 no. We don't have robes. We don't have a Bible. We're not sitting around chanting. Uh, we don't have a, a physical church. Uh, but it does, you know, you saw in the documentary, and I know you're not old enough to remember when Monty Python came out, but that Monty Python, Life of Brian reference, I thought mm-hmm. was very appropriate, which was um, when he dropped, you know, Brian was... Uh, misidentified as the christ and so people were chasing him around yeah. and when he drops his shoe people were going what does it mean right and immediately with some of the br- most brilliant writing ever mm-hmm. they he they were they uh, they you could see five different religions forming in 90 seconds just yeah. over the dropping of this shoe and that's what that's that one aspect of flat earth which i think is really interesting which is there's so many people trying to define the, the like the scope of flat earth you know, what, mm-hmm. what does it mean? You know, not only what is what is it, or what, what is the physical structure of it, but what does it mean to everybody? And so there's all this massive amount of enthusiasm. And the one common thread is that everybody at least knows it's not a globe anymore. We've, yeah. got, we've got a 99% retention rate. It, meaning if once you go into Flat Earth, you can't come out. It's kind of like a red pl- pill, blue pill thing. You, you yeah. literally can't come out of it. And because because even if you wanted to, there's nothing left to go back to you get you know people try to go back to the globe it's like the, you mm-hmm. just look at it it's like oh yeah there was nothing really there you were you were so the disillusionment is is totally in effect you you can't go mm-hmm. back so there's a certain religious act aspect to it but yeah i still try to push the the flat earth university thing just because it, there is a lot of true things i mean it's like look once you get through the main gates there's all sorts of different places you can go there's you can want to bash nasa hey go over there you want to do this type of test or this type of test go over there you want to make music yeah. there you know you want to you want to tr- do advanced map making there you go over there there's all sorts of different places you could go to once you get into the flat earth topic but yeah mm-hmm. the wildfire i mean that's just the speed of which it's going that again it's it's kind of a multi oh multi metaphor movement how's that yeah yeah i think yeah that works um and i yeah so this is this is all really fascinating thank you (laughs) oh no worries um so i'd like to kind of focus more or not focus more but like kind of turn our attention to uh individuals of the movement and social interactions sure um and you mentioned your uh your your flat earth evidence videos on youtube and it even focused they talked about this in the documentary about how you would you just talked about gaining traction really really quickly right um and so one of the one of the reasons i was nervous about interviewing you at first is because you're not like um and you're not like a typical flat earther you're one of the heads of the community you know so you're i i was worried that your social interactions might be more like a little bit different than someone who is just you know a flat earther um and they don't like make youtube videos or interact that often with other people right um, so I was just wondering what was what was like one of the first interactions that you remember after having after making those videos where you realized that um, it had an effect offline as well. It was immediate. Uh, so I did the clues at the beginning of 2015. Uh, in fact, almost uh, four years to the day ago, and oh, wow. yeah, February February 10th, 2015, okay. and. When and I put them out literally holding my breath saying, you know, again, I, I consider myself a, a really clever problem solver. And mm-hmm. so when I put these things out, I, I was just waiting for the backlash. 
Your, but I was waiting for somebody from academia to call me up and say, okay, here's where you went. Here's where you went wrong. You forgot to carry the two here and you can close down your YouTube channel and get back to your normal life. Yeah. And instead, people were calling me uh, on the other side, meaning I am, I had interviews almost right away from, from small podcasts, conspiracy podcasts. That's where mm -hmm. that's usually started. And those started ramping up because everybody, the, they're all interconnected. Everybody watches what each other's ha what has. And it was, a, it yeah. was almost like this brand new topic that no one had ever heard of before. And seriously, mm -hmm. no one's ever really talked about flat earth in any media. Forget about social media. There's never been a flat earth television show or a movie or uh, really, I mean, yeah, a few books, but nothing, nothing recent. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I had subject matter experts calling me up saying yeah. that, Hey, you know what? You may be on to something completely unsolicited. If I, mm -hmm. again, live long enough to write an autobiography, that's the name of the autobiography is unsolicited because they okay. just kept coming. And the fun, because, and one of the reasons I'm not, I'm not going to pat myself on the back and say I'm a leader because uh, I made really, really great stuff. Part of it was just timing. I was out there making stuff when no one else was making stuff. And I also put my contact information out there. Conspiracy people are notorious for trying to remain anonymous. You know, they use aliases. Mm -hmm. They never put their phone number or their address or, you know, their, any other, any of those things. And mm -hmm. people, and I put my phone number out there. I said, look, just call me. In fact, I put it in the clues. The, literally the very first intro, I go, look. And, but I did it for a very specific reason, which was call me because I want to know how I messed this thing up. There's no way yeah. I can be right, right? So tell me how yeah. I'm wrong. And the, as Murphy's Law goes, the, the opposite happened, which was people are calling me going, yeah, you may be onto something, man. And then, mm -hmm. then the military guys and then the engineers and then the pilots. And then, wow. oh, yeah, the, they all came forward and they all said the same thing. In fact, I, I did um, an artillery guy uh, working out of Iraq uh, who said the same thing. He goes, look, he goes, we've all heard the same thing. You know, we all, we've all seen the charts. Which is okay mm -hmm. when you're firing weapons. I don't care if it's a tank or a, a cannon or a missile or a navy gun ship or whatever it is. Yeah, you you have you, you. There are charts for the curvature of the Earth and the spinning, the rotation of the Earth. He goes, yeah, I'll see him. Nobody uses them ever for anything. They're just in the book. Mm. And the question is, why is nobody using it? And it's because it's not there. It's just a, mm -hmm. it's just a holdover from World War Two where they put them in yeah. there and uh, anyway so but the, yeah the effect was immediate people were calling me uh, right off the bat I didn't have to do to this day I've never had to call anybody uh, you know like you you know people just keep calling yeah. and just say hey you want to talk about okay. flat Earth hey you want to talk about flat Earth and uh, to where uh, yeah I even I'll, I'll tell you one I'll tell you one quick story and this will mm -hmm. make sense how far it went to where I was walking I'm up here on an island right. North yeah. of Seattle. I'm up, but well, you know where I am, you know, Europe at Western, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm, I might as well be in the San Juans, right? There's not a lot of people up here and I'm walking by a construction site and this, uh, construction worker is clocking me when I get out of the car and I'm loading a sack of dirt. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's looking at me and I'm going, what? And he goes, you're that flat earth guy. And I go, what? He goes, you're Mark Sargent. And I go, yeah, I am Mark Sarge. He goes, oh, dude, I have got to get a selfie with you. And and sure enough, yeah, I didn't know this guy from Adam. And he was literally mm -hmm. up here on the island. And he's like, look, no, if there's people here. There's people everywhere. I mean, um, uh, I'll tell you I'll tell you another one real quick. You'll like this, mm -hmm. which was, and if you want to go over an hour, that's fine. I don't, I don't really care. I'm not okay. su super busy today. But I was down in um, uh, Los Angeles shooting for the National Geographic thing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we were out to dinner, a few of the Flat Earthers and I, we were out at this little restaurant and there was a phone call. And, or sorry, one of, one of them got texts because the, the, the woman I was with, uh, Patricia Steer, she, she mm -hmm. loves one of those people that puts everything on Facebook. So it's like, oh, here's my, yeah. lov my lovely dinner at this restaurant. It's like, take a picture of the dinner. It's like, whatever. And somebody who was at the meetup in uh, Los Angeles mm -hmm. uh, saw that and said, oh, hey, we're right up the hill from you. Um, we're at my brother-in-law house, brother's-in-law house. And, uh, she, she goes, she, and you, you want to come up and, and have a couple drinks and, and talk, talk flat earth and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and she goes, oh, we're down here at dinner. And she goes, oh yeah, by the way, my, my brother-in-law is this A-lister, uh, television legend. <laughs> and I'm, I can't, I can't, yeah. I'm not going to give you the name here. I'll, I'll tell you after, I'll tell you after. 
Oh. Um, oh, I mean, you, you don't have to do that just for like privacy sake. No, no, well, no, no. Well, just but join the story. But but the point yeah. is, is there was an a, it was an A lister, and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, so we go up there, and I'll be damned, you know, we we spend hours with this with this A lister, and he during the during the thing, he goes, hey, do you want to know how I found out about flat Earth? And I said, okay, how how did you find? It? He goes, I heard it at the Oscars this year. You know, not the Oscars okay. from that are coming up in a couple of weeks, but the Oscars last year. And he goes, yeah. this this Academy Award winning uh, actress told me and a group of people dur after the uh, during one of the after parties. It's like, are you kidding me? She, he goes, no. He goes, there's a lot of people that know about this. And he goes, but 90% of them don't want to hit the dance floor because they're afraid of what might happen. I mean, you saw yeah. again the uh, the Kyrie Irving thing. You know, the the basketball player. He comes mm -hmm. out. <laughs> God bless him. He was so confident. You're 24. You've already won your championship. You're friends with LeBron James, and yeah. he's like going to the All Star game. He's got nothing to lose. He's got his ring, and he's like, it's like, yeah, I'm a flat earther. Here's why. Blah blah blah. What do you think the reporters were gonna do when he landed? They just assaulted him to where now. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's now in Boston, but it's now something he didn't realize this uh, at the time, which was it's now something that any journalist will keep in their back pocket forever. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, so how'd you play tonight? Blah, blah, blah. And if they get bored or whatever, it's like, oh, yeah, you still believe in Flat Earth? That's a question I'm sure is asked of him probably every game. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Flat Earth. You believe in Tech Earth? You know, I heard such and such was into Flat Earth, you know, and this is now the curse uh, until yeah. this thing gets bigger and bigger. So sorry, I went off into the weeds. Where, where do you want to go? No, next? I think that, um, especially just for this project, really any uh, story that still involves social interaction is something that I'm I'm looking to hear. Be, just because uh, you are my first interview, it's been more difficult to get people that will actually talk to me like over the phone or sure. uh, over Skype. Uh, and that makes sense. But I just need to take it a step at a time. And I think that by talking to you, I can also figure out um, what about the social aspects of being in the flat earth community or movement or, you know, uh, university, uh, that people really care about. Right. Um, but speaking of being a member, there was something that there, there, there might be a couple of questions that pop up, um, that either might be in the documentary or, um, you know, might've been addressed elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of need to like ask them sure. because sure, sure. Uh, I need to like have them in my paper. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things I found when doing research a lot is um, uh, the term shill being thrown around a lot. What does that mean to you and to other flat earthers? It means earthers? nothing. The shill, okay, conspiracy people are notoriously, I wouldn't even use the word paranoid. They're cautious. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. really cautious about things. Why wouldn't they be? They're told don't trust anyone right so what do you think yeah. happens you know you i mean i'm pretty open i'm i'm one of those believe people that believe um trust everybody but count your change mm -hmm. which is just like okay give them give people the benefit of the doubt but don't you know turn your back completely to them it's like you know mm -hmm. make sure you know everything's cool you know don't be surprised if they come back and burn you because as you know people lie and people will burn each other um yeah. when it comes to the whole shill accusation uh, oh god First of all, most people, and I'm, I'm going to say this because it, it, it needs to be said, most people don't even know what the definition of shill is, right? The, the whole the definition of shill comes from the word shillaber, which means Carney's assistant. And, and we all know this type of person, which is yeah. when you're playing three card Monty or, or whatever, usually three card Monty is a best, better example. But when you're, mm -hmm. you know, find the queen, find the queen, right? And there's a guy in the audience saying, oh, yeah, I totally found the queen won 20 bucks like 10 minutes ago. That's what that person does. They work for sure. the person that's that's doing the con. Uh, mm -hmm. And so when I get accused of being a shell, I come back and I say, well, okay, one, if I'm a shell, I'm the worst secret agent ever because I haven't made my move yet and I'm coming up on four years since I, I mean, three years probably active, but it's like, okay, mm -hmm. when am I going to turn Flat Earth in a, in a bad direction? I've always said the same thing. Sure. I have never deviated, which is... Mm -hmm. Flat Earth could potentially open up a golden age for people. It could, you know, get everybody in the same frame of mind, you know, not necessarily kumbaya, <laughs> but everybody's in the same boat, which means, you yeah. know, wars and all these horrible things that, that are happening may not be as likely. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, the, the accusations are going to be out there. And yeah, people, it's in the conspiracy world, it's guilty before innocent. And it mm -hmm. doesn't take a rumor long. Uh, the, the shill thing with me was passed around by rivals. 
Mm -hmm. and and that shouldn't shock anyone look politicians do that every election that's all they do because people don't remember you know that's why politics are never when you see the commercials they're never about uh uh oh yeah i'm i'm a great politician it's like my opponent's terrible he's he's this 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 fill in the blank here all these things combined right because they Mm want to put doubt in in your head and that's what these couple guys that were you know rival channels that's you know mm-hmm. there's this huge amount of competition uh it, it, we see it in the, it's kind it's kind of rivals the the sports world more than anything else which is look when you get up to a certain competitive level you'll do anything to win mm-hmm. plain and simple uh i'll use real quick um people say well wait what are you talking about? i'm talking i'm saying like lance armstrong lied to the media for seven years yeah. seven years he just nope Nope, totally legit, totally legit. And only when they had him, only when they had him, did he say, oh, yeah, I was lying the entire time. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what? So, yeah, when will people lie about other people? Yes. Uh, the motivation varies. Sometimes it's just natural suspicion. Most of the time it's just the rumor mill. You know, okay. if, if you have a big enough YouTube channel, you can do a lot of damage uh, to, to someone. All, you know, which is yeah. why, you know, newspapers get sued. You know, even if the story is completely wrong, you know, that's why there's civil suits. You know, if you say, oh, yeah, this person's a pedophile and he's not. Oh, yeah. The newspaper's in a lot of trouble because people read yeah. it and may, they may not get to the follow up story. And they, mm-hmm. you know, they look at that. So, yeah, the shill thing, I'm I'm not too concerned. OK. Yeah, I was just checking because um, it's not like always overtly clear what a shill is. You talked a little bit about it in the documentary. So some clarification is always right. helpful to write that up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Co- but you co-intel oh, pro co-intel counterintelligence that's really what a shill is that's what we that's what we call it in the spy world uh, okay gotcha yeah. um uh but you you brought up something really interesting um about uh criticisms from people who are still part of the community that you are they're just like rivals yeah um and you talked earlier about how uh criticisms from people who aren't flat earthers are just like a little bit of water on a large fire um, so I'm kind of curious, how do you deal with criticisms that come from inside the community? Uh, it's a little more difficult because, in fact, there's a lot of loose alliances inside the community where, you know, you, people rub each other the wrong way. It's, it's kind of like little bands forming, you know, cl- again, why I, I said in the documentary, it's kind of like clans of the Scottish Highlands, which mm-hmm. is if they're bored, if they're restless, they're just going to start taking swings at each other. Uh, yeah. and, and which is why we're so it's, I'm so happy when I see somebody, you know, come out against this like Neil deGrasse Tyson or Joe Rogan or Bill Nye, because mm-hmm. at least it gives it all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, right. We're we're an army after all. We, we have to attack something. Yeah. Um, most of the time, the little domestic squabbles don't really worry me too much. Um, mm-hmm. It does. It does happen. But that happens with everything. I mean, come on. There's people that, yeah. that bad. There's look at look at all the bad blood in, in Hollywood. You know, between, you know, it's it's one of those inside jokes where there's all sorts of Hollywood people that just hate each other. But uh, and, and sometimes you'll hear the grumbling, but we're not we're not immune to it. Look, we're human like everybody else. Mm-hmm. OK, interesting. Mm. Uh, that's really it's nice to get like a little uh, snapshot of the community. Uh, uh, when I was first doing research, uh, I posted on uh, like a, a subreddit for Flat Earth and there's multiple and so it was just like a generic, hey, I'm doing this project. I'm looking for people to talk to. And then someone said that um, the first thing I should know is that some people don't actually trust uh, the website, the Flat Earth Society. Right. Um, do you mind me asking which camp you're in? Of like, Oh, yeah, yeah. The- most, so- most of social media doesn't trust the, 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 the full-blown Flat Earth Society because, one, they won't even come out in public, and we don't even know who they are. And two, oh. we outpaced them years ago, meaning mm-hmm. uh, it was, I think I was into it like 18 months at least before yeah. somebody, I still don't remember his name, it shows you how, how, what of an impact he made. He calls me up and goes, oh yeah, we like, we like what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. And I said, hey, no offense, man, but where have you guys been? We've been ripping it up out here for a while. Yeah. We're Flat Earth 2.0. We were mm-hmm. hoping you would get involved, but now, now you waited so long. It's like pfft, we don't need you. We're we're just gonna do it without you. Um, the, when I got into flat Earth in 2014, first started looking into it. I joined one of those societies. 
uh, mm-hmm. just to see I was looking for answers. It's like, okay, they should know something. And mm-hmm. I realized they had dedicated trolls that were just um, uh, beating down the the people that were coming in. I mean, they were they were just they had no no opposition in the forums. They were saying, "Oh yeah, it's a joke. It's not real. Nothing to see here. Go away." It's like, why mm-hmm. would you let why would you let trolls do this? Now, I'm not saying necessarily they were compliant that they were doing it deliberately. Yeah. There's a lot of people that say that the the official flat Earth society is a government run organization. May or not, may or may not be, but at the very least, they're apathetic to where yeah. they just don't. It's like, look, keep your house tidy. Don't don't mm-hmm. let this sort of thing happen. I mean, uh, and so to this day, uh, like at the last conference, nobody that was speaking at that conference n- yeah. knew anything about the uh, the Flatter Society. Really? No, no. I mean, meaning they, they didn't know any. They, they weren't involved. Uh, hang That's... on one second. Yeah. That's fascinating. Totally uninvolved. Wow. I'm back. Good? Okay. That's fascinating. Yeah. That, um, just because, you know, it seems that, at least for me, when I first decided I wanted to look into Flat Earth, uh, the Flat Earth community, uh, the society was the first thing that popped up. So it seems very interesting that um, it's so outdated and that if people want to look into it, they might automatically just go to the wrong source. Even if they, if they go to it, the good news is, is that we have such a massive social media presence that even if you go there, eventually you're going to go back to the right place. The flow mm-hmm. chart may take you a little bit of a roundabout way to get there, but eventually yeah. because people, you know, pictures are worth a thousand words, people are going to look for the, the videos. And mm-hmm. everyone knows, look, the new television is YouTube. I mean, yeah, of course, there's you know Netflix and Roku and iTunes and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But YouTube is a huge wealth of, of just about anything you can think of. And I know some people say, oh, YouTube's not legit. It's like, come on, if you want to fix a carburetor on a 57 Chevy, that's where I'm going. You know, people yeah, look it up. For also, so don't tell me that it's all junk. It's this weird mm-hmm. gray area of, of knowledge and pseudo knowledge. And, Mm -hmm. you know, what's the difference between the two? Not much. I mean, seriously, if you watch 20 Flat Earth videos in a row, uh, even if you hate it, something's going to sink in. The seed's going to be planted. Yeah, that's true. Um, Speaking of uh, planting seeds, uh, since you have a more uh, visible role in the community, uh, are there ever times where you meet someone that you don't, like, I'd assume that, if you met someone new and they were a flat earther, they would know you and they let you know. Um, so what I'm wondering is, A, have you ever converted anyone to being a flat earther? And B, uh, if you, when you meet someone new who doesn't, who is not a flat earther, right. um, do you tell them or like how long do you wait to tell them or like how does, what is that? thought process work for you the, like, to like, the unsolicited i don't i'm there's lots of people that'll do street activism in flat earth i that's not my method mine's a little softer touch which is it's sort of the illusion of i'm coming to them but i will make it look like they're coming to me so gotcha. like a perfect example is when we were flying back from oh god was that raleigh i think it was raleigh north carolina for the conference mm-hmm. from last year i'm sorry 2016 or sorry, yeah. 2017. Wow, time flies. <laughs> uh, and there were—I was sitting next to a woman, ne- never met her in my life. Just her and I, mm-hmm. and the in the in the middle seat was open. And there were people, but there was had to have been at least seven flat earthers on the plane that were flying back from the conference, and they all knew where mm-hmm. I sat. And they'd all came, they all came up to me one by one. It's like, hey, I wanted to shake my hand, and uh, you know, I gave them T-shirts and stuff, and signed some stuff. And mm-hmm. they, uh, and after a while, the woman couldn't take it anymore. So uh, by the, we were like maybe 30 minutes to landing and she says, okay, who are you? And I go, I go, mm-hmm. oh, I really don't want to talk about it. You know, I, I do, do, do the whole thing where it's yeah. like people, people love a mystery that it's irresistible yeah. to a lot of people. I go, I really, I, she goes, no, what do you do? I go, look, I could tell you. But I don't know, you know, you got to be a certain type of person to really absorb it. Like you're probably better off not knowing, you know, and then I just got went back to what I was doing. It's like yeah. she was like, no, seriously, you got to tell me. And so, all right, you sure? Because I don't want this coming back on me. I don't want you to, you know, to shoot the messenger type of thing. And so I gave mm-hmm. her the nickel tour, maybe it took 10 minutes. And yeah. then I said, here's some videos and, you know, have fun. 
and that's all it takes. You know, you're not there mm -hmm. to what I what I try to tell everybody in the in the community is that, look, you're not there to convince convince them. All you're there to do is plant the seed, <clears throat> mm -hmm. because the absorption period varies from from individual to individual. So some people it takes uh, you know a very short amount of time, and other people latch on. But everyone wants that satisfaction of staring at them and watching it when it happens. It's like no, you're <laughs> not going to get that. It's 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 very very rare. Um, mm -hmm. That that happens to me all the time, where people you know, especially in America, is like, what do you do? It's like, oh god, well, yeah. I make I make YouTube videos, and it's really what about? And it's like, yeah, I really yeah. don't want to tell you that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it's something really weird, really out there. You know, I'll, I'll try to kind of oversell it. You know, I'll say, look, mm -hmm. it's something so out there that uh, you, you really, you know, I, I won't even use the word conspiracy. And and mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, it'd be like people wouldn't understand. They'd be like, what do you mean? Um, but nowadays, people have a reference. It's been in so many media things that people mm -hmm. are like, oh, the thing that Kai, you know, I like, told some kid at the rental car place down in Los Angeles that I was that I was there for National Geographic and I was the subject, and they, mm -hmm. uh, he said, um, he goes, what for? And I said, I just said, I go flat Earth. He goes, oh, like Kyrie, and I go, yeah, yeah, like, and and so everyone's got some sort of point, a rally mm -hmm. point for this, and then I just have to fill in the blanks from there. But yeah, it, okay. it happens. Fascinating. Um, and so kind of in, in a similar vein, have you ever met someone who uh, was not a flat earther and, you know, maybe they asked what you did um, and you told them and it didn't go well? Oh, like, has there, like... <laughs> oh I, I got one better than that. Okay. So I was at a film festival. Uh, so the documentary uh, before it was released last November, uh, it was in the film festival circuit and I got a chance to fly around to different places because... The directors didn't even realize how popular, you know, how many festivals it got into 21 festivals in seven countries. And so they didn't have enough manpower to send out to these places. And they said, hey, how would you like to go out and, mm -hmm. and ask, answer questions? And I knew full well they didn't really want me to do that. But heck, why not? Right. So yeah. I go out to Little Rock, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And I'm in I'm watching uh, the showing of it. It was there was two showings. I was only there for one of them. And there was a woman, a middle aged woman. Uh, she had been like nervous early 60s and mm -hmm. she was nervously laughing throughout most of the movie and i think she walked out before the last 20 minutes were up and you could tell it was just an affront to her you know there were mm -hmm. some people that, that the denial thing just hits them it's like and, and she was laughing to the point where the audience you know i knew the the humor beats of that of that movie and she was yeah. laughing at stuff that wasn't humor beats you could just tell that it was just out, she was laughing outrageously at it, meaning it was it was it was really offensive to her, right? Mm -hmm. So, and this was an all expense paid trip, and so the film festival, this, this you talk about Murphy's Law and synchronicity. So the film mm -hmm. festival, which had oh god, uh, f there was only I think fifty five films in that particular festival, which was pretty amazing. People have no idea how many submissions there are. It's usually over a thousand submissions per year, mm -hmm. and because of that they have dedicated people for you you know to like i had a day like, i had to catch a flight because i had to get, do another festival which was weird small world up in bellingham so no way. i know yeah we we did a, a the a festival up there and so i had a um a, you know, of all the places you know there was one in bellingham yeah. uh and the i had a dedicated driver that was going to pick me up at 5 a.m to catch the very first first flight out of little rock to, mm -hmm. to fly uh, to Seattle and then drive his haul ass as fast as I could up to Bellingham. Yep. And who do you think picked me up in that car? That same woman that was at the showing. Oh, no. And, and it's like, and I, and I recognized her immediately. And she didn't know, she, well, of course, she knew who I was from the movie. She didn't know mm -hmm. that I knew who she was. And she would not talk about it. You know, she, she was like, she made, she went out of her way. She knew the film. Mm -hmm. She, you know, she watched it. She knew who I was. And it was at least an hour drive to the airport. Yeah. Did not address it once. She was not going to. She was just not mm -hmm. going to. There were some people that are like that. Denial. She just could not get past it. Uh, but yeah. I thought it was again interesting. It's like, of course, of course, it's her. You know, why? Why wouldn't me? There's, there's hundreds of people that could have driven yeah. me. You know, what are the odds that this person is? Uh, it was going to be it. But yeah, she was having none of it. And every once in a while, you will run into those that people. I don't know what her education background. Couldn't even get to that point. 
because she was not yeah. even willing to go down that road, even in the slightest. It was like it was small Absolutely. talk for the rest of the thing, and I wasn't going to push it either. I wasn't going to mm -hmm. be like, so let's talk about the movie. <laughs> no, no, she wasn't going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to think of any oh um i think there's probably just like one or two more questions that's left. fine um so i'm kind of curious especially because um you know as we talked about you have this uh, you're, you're like ahead of the community do you have any friends that aren't flat earthers and if so what are those relationships like i do have friends that are that are non-flat earthers but it's it's mixed like with a lot okay. of people in in uh in the community I mean, I, I've seen it where, you know, brothers and sisters, like I've got two cousins that are in the closet. Uh, they're not coming mm -hmm. out. Uh, my, my sister hates it. Mom's into it. Uh, there are husbands and wives that have split over it. Um, do I do I have friends that are that are not into it? Yes. Yes, I do. Do they accept what I'm doing? Yes, they do. Because I'm a little weird anyway. I mean, I've always been eccentric, so I can get away with mm -hmm. it. Uh, other people that seem more straight laced when they get into it, it, people think they've gone off the rails, so they don't they don't know mm -hmm. quite what to to make of the situation. Um, most people, the the ones that I have friends that are into it, that are that I know that aren't into it, mm -hmm. it's more of a tolerance thing where they just it's not that they've looked at the evidence; they just won't look at it. They won't mm -hmm. look at the topic. It's like you know what. I've got my own life to, and it's weird. It's, it's some of them. It's more of a, uh, their the distractions of their life are enough for them. In fact, mm -hmm. I've heard this quote, which is like, "Look, I got enough on my plate right now, yeah. without looking at this, because this could mm -hmm. completely overturn that." And yeah. so they don't. And it's like, all right, that's fine. And so again, I don't push it. I, I say, mm -hmm. look, if you want to look, I mean, it's, I'm easy to find. You, you know, I, I've easy to find. So yeah. Okay, um, so not not trying to pry too much, but um, you you mentioned that since people will will end relationships and marriages yes. because of that, um, so what form do these relationships take with people who don't share your belief? You, is it just like a you know see each other for maybe like a beer and talk casually? Yeah, about? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's weird because you're you're going through and they know it too. It's it's mm -hmm. strange to see they're going through the motions as well as you are. And it's, yeah. it's, there's a little bit of awkwardness there because it's always it's it, talk about the the proverbial elephant in the room. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. it. <laughs> it's like you're talking about stuff, right? And mm -hmm. then and, and but they have they're really nervous about bringing up things like oh what are you gonna be doing? Oh I'm gonna go into a conference in New Zealand. Oh I'm gonna be doing a film festival and blah 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 because they know mm -hmm. it's it always ties back to that. They can't do follow up gotcha. questions on simple things. They just mm -hmm. know you know there's like okay I get it you're busy you're doing this it's interesting but i'm still not going to they can't it's kind of like you know a combination of walking on eggshells and avoiding landmines simultaneously because they, yeah. they just don't know what to do and so i feel some sometimes they they won't get a hold of me as much you know because what do you do you know you're you're on completely for lack of a better term you're on completely different frequencies yeah. And, and unless they're on that frequency, seriously, I've heard this many, many times from people now because there's flat earth dating sites that have, that have popped yeah. up because it's like if you're not in flat earth, mm -hmm. you are going to have a tough time with any yeah. sort of serious intimate relationship. It's just there's too much of a gap there. And mm -hmm. so uh, I've, I've said, look, I can't I cannot date, in fact, which is weird because my my social life has been great ever since i got into flat earth because the yeah. people have you know sought me out the, the the flat earth women that have been involved they're all fantastic and mm -hmm. and you can you know you're you know again why why the conferences and the meetups are such a um a love fest because everyone's on the same page you go you walk yeah. into the room it's like you don't have to worry about this guy coming at you and this guy coming at you everyone's like oh yeah flat earth thumbs up you know same team let's go Mm -hmm. so it's it's interesting that yeah that is really interesting it's uh it gives me a lot to to think about and look into especially because uh so the whole the whole gist of this project is i'm taking the interviews first right and i'm reading them and i'm like coding them for similarities that pop up right uh and then i have to dig through like past sociological and psychological research and say 
well, like maybe the flat earth community deals with outsiders this way, which is something that a lot of uh, religious groups deal like. And these are tactics that uh, religious groups use to deal with persecution or something like that. Um, so like drawing the similarities and like thinking about why the community has formed those uh, those like behaviors. The, you know? the one the one thing I let me let me comment on that, which is mm -hmm. there's the difference between a standard because trust me, I've looked at different religious angles here. You know, it's like yeah. what makes us different. We're not exactly the difference between the flat earth and say a religious body is that anyone that attacks us, we also see as a potential convert. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we look at them; they're attacking us, and and I've tried. I've said this, and there's lots of people that've been parroting it, which yeah. is like I can't get mad at them because I look. I can't wait. Like if you came at me, it's like I can't mm -hmm. get mad at you, no matter what you said, because I used to be you. And yeah. so we kind of, I it, we'll throw a science fiction thing in there, which is we're kind of like vampires, in a way, mm -hmm. which is okay. oh yeah, we know you're coming at you, but all we mm -hmm. have to do is get close enough. And we mm -hmm. turn you, you know, and but it's not this sinister thing. We're a bunch of happy little flat earth vampires <laughs> that are walking yeah. around going, oh, we'll be happy to bite you. But, you know, until then, we're not we're, but we're not mm -hmm. going to necessarily some of us. Yeah, some of us will seek you out. But the most time we'll wait till you come to us. Yeah. And, and it's like, fine, you're going to attack us. Fine. Come closer. Come closer. And then we've got you. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, the more time it's, it's amazing watching people that regularly attack us. Yeah. Um, there's some that just won't do it. They, they, they won't, they won't convert because they're in, they're stuck in denial. They will not come mm -hmm. out of it. There's like, no, because you ask them, it's like, have you looked into it? No, I haven't looked into it. It's ridiculous. So, okay. So you're going to stay at arm's length, but anyone that yeah. attacks us enough times, because I used to do it too, you get close enough. And all of a sudden, you know, it's like, uh, getting too close to, um, again, like a vampire or a zombie, you know, eventually mm -hmm. you're going to get bit and then, yeah. you know, you know, walk around. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Well, let's see here. Um, I think that's all the questions. Those, like, that's that's like the more majority of the questions that um, is like project based. Okay. Uh, I have. Okay. I have two more questions. Sure. Uh, sure. And the first is, what would you tell someone who is just now getting into the flat Earth community um, about like? You know, if you if you meet someone that only recently became a flat earther, do you give them advice on oh, how to get all the time? All the community, all okay, the time. What kind of um, advice do you give? Them? First, first advice is do not. The the most common mistake that all flat earthers make is they forgot mm -hmm. the journey that got them there. Meaning uh, that the two weeks it takes them, by the time they get there, they're like, oh, it was so obvious. You know, I can't believe I missed it. And then when they're trying to convert somebody they forget that time it's like so they sit down it's like oh i can totally gotcha. I, the times i've heard this i can totally convert somebody in like two hours or a, over a family dinner or a cup of coffee it's like no you can't <laughs> mm -hmm. because you couldn't you you know you didn't so why do you think but that's the confidence that gives you it's like oh yeah, yeah i can totally get this guy and so they're they're they, they're bursting they want to you know it's like learning this suit you know the old saying uh, the only way to keep a secret between three people is to kill two of them the 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 amount of energy that it gives you, you're just dying to tell people. So that's the first piece of advice I give, which is why I use the line, I don't know if it was in the documentary or not, which was um, from Fight Club, which is the first rule of Flat Club is that you do not talk about Flat Club, which of mm -hmm. course, it doesn't mean that you're never going to talk about it. It means you size up who you're going to talk about it with. You, you, yeah. you, you make it very exclusive if you can. It's like, okay, do they believe in the moon missions? If they do, you might want to back off a little bit and not 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 do that. That's the first piece of advice I give them. The second one is, um, just plant the seed and walk away, or for lack of a better term, uh, light the fuse and walk away. All you have to do is put the idea in the in their head. That's it. And all you, and it even as simple as walking up and say, "Hey, have you looked into flat Earth yet?" And then leave, right? And if you do yeah. that, pe people will try, people will do the same thing that I did. It's like, okay, they'll try to resolve it. They'll go home. They'll say, I can prove it's a globe because of this. And they'll type that in. And they'll, and they think they've got it. And there'll be these loose threads, more loose threads. And they're like, ah, why can't I prove it? And mm -hmm. those, are the, those are the two main things I tell people. Um, the third one is, of course, that how they deal with the, the persecution, which is you're going to have to develop a little bit of a thick skin. And by that, you've got to put yourself in their shoes because you were in their shoes. Meaning, yeah. if you used to make fun of Flat Earth, remember that. 
because mm -hmm. if you because because so many people, I mean, they, they get on YouTube, they make their very first because uh, really the, the Flat Earth 2.0 is content driven. It's merit driven. I, I didn't get to do what I do with Flat Earth because uh, necessarily because of activism. But if your content resonates with people like anything on YouTube, you're going to get more and more and more <laughs> followers. But the comments that come in the comment sections, I hardly ever read them because really? it's brutal well even come on mm -hmm. let's face it the 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 saying i should probably put it on a t-shirt which is um i used to think that uh uh the saying was if you can't say something nice don't say anything at all right no that's not mm -hmm. what i think anymore if you can't say something nice you're probably in the youtube forums right now <laughs> oh my gosh okay seriously yeah. you could make a video about a kitten and a puppy trying to squeeze into the same slipper with mm -hmm. a butterfly over the top and within probably five posts you're gonna have somebody coming in going that is effing gay man unsub mm -hmm. you know unlike and seriously yeah. you can only make a video to about a hundred likes without a dislike before someone comes in because they want the pride of hitting that first thumbs down and yeah. can multiply that by oh i don't know the most polarizing topic ever like flat earth and mm -hmm. then you know people i seriously i've watched people shut down pull videos time after time shut down channels because they're like where's all this hate coming from it's like you were in mm -hmm. that hate don't forget yeah. what it was seriously there's this weird amnesia when you get into flat earth it's like oh everything's you know was the lego thing <laughs> everything is awesome and then yeah. it's like no it's not it's like you just came from a dark place don't forget where you where your roots were so mm -hmm. yeah, those are the three things okay Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, so the last question kind of ties into uh, the the latter part that you mentioned about how, you know, the YouTube forums can be an awful, awful place. Right. Um, as someone who is is more in tune with the community uh, than I am, where would you go to find more people to talk about their experiences with? Because I've been on Reddit and oh, you mean you you just people. finding people? Uh, well, you know, they have those the, the subreddits that you can post in. Um, but my issue is that I think that because, uh, like, I mean, it's just harder to get people to open up and actually want to talk to me right. because one of the requirements of the project is I need to, like, have Skype conversations or phone calls. How, how, many, how many do you want? Um, I probably need, uh, so after you, I need, like, three, three to four more. Men, women, young, old, what do you want? anyone oh are you kidding i i'm hardwired in so it, it's not that hard at all uh the people okay. well i mean seriously there's a group of people most of them are speakers at the conferences or they organize mm -hmm. meetups uh and that is again yeah you hate to say it but yeah there is a kind of like fight club that you gotta yeah. if you're on the outside look not to say, you're not media exactly uh but people yeah. will look at you and say okay What's your mm -hmm. angle? Are you, do you hate us? You know, do you, are you one of those globalist people or, and so, but once somebody mm -hmm. vouches for you, then you're usually in better shape. So don't, don't worry about that. So what I will do is I will recommend, um, uh, uh, several people. And then, then, it, then the chain just starts. And that is, you can just yeah. ask them the same thing. It's like, Hey, can, who would you, who else would you talk to? I mean, I, there's literally like an unlimited amount of people, but I'll pick people from the conference.